Great, I did leave the cage open. Yeah, no, hun, everything's fine. I'll be right over. Hey, Green Machine comic friends and fans of fun, we're going to do our weekly review. We just recorded the whole review without sound, so we got to do it again. So it was a practice run, and we're ready to do it. Um, next is War of the Realms. Oh, we need to talk. So there was a lot of good comics this week. In fact, I think there was one that I was not really a huge fan of. Um, a lot of good comics this week, so we're going to jump right into it, I guess, with Venom. Venom, once again, what happened last time? He made a deal with a witch. And the witch thought she could control him, and you, no, you, you can't control Eddie Brock. And, and now he's got a symbiote suit that uh, responds to him. Like, he's in control of the symbiote suit, not the other way around with the symbiote in control. And it's really cool to see. So, been having a good time with this Venom run. I'm really wondering if it's building towards a fight between him and his OG suit. What do you think? Maybe? Yeah. Uh, we could see that. I'm hoping. So, anyways... This Venom run's been great. Go pick it up. Uh, it does not disappoint. War of the Realms, still having fun. Even though it's not Donny Cates, which uh, I love everything Donny Cates these days. However, this is a great showing. Uh, next is Batman Detective Comics. Uh, this is, in my opinion, one of the better Detective Comics issues. Uh, I had a really good time with it. Granted, I love everything Batman and I love everything Detective Comics, so I'm a bit biased. Um... But the beginning of Detective Comics when there was a Bat Family was great. Uh, and ever since then, it's sort of not felt as deep to me, as fun to me. However, this was great. This is uh, the story of Arkham Knight. We found out last issue that she is related to the founders of Arkham. And that her dad is, is also a doctor, Dr. Arkham, who works at uh, Arkham Asylum. And it goes from there. And so, I, it's, it's a really good origin story. It was really fleshed out, well thought out. Uh, it sort of explains why she's kind of, why she's angry at Batman, and why she's kind of sympathetic towards uh, helping uh, Arkham's yeah. inmates. You flashed me those panels, and I was like, dude, yeah. really? <laughs> it was really good. So, I don't know where they're going with this. Could this be a, a, a future villain for Batman, possibly? Could it be another member of the Bat family? Maybe? Two little things on the top of her helmet. Yeah. Had a great time with this book. So, go pick this up. Granted, it's not, it's not a first appearance, but it is an origin story, and it's a really good one. Uh, a good follow-up from last week. Yeah. Too. Had a great time with this book. So, yeah, uh, that's, that's Detective Comics number 1004. Next is War of the Realms Avengers, Earth Mightiest Heroes, and this is the Siege of Avengers Mountain. And there's a character I didn't really know called Gorilla Man. Do you know Gorilla Man? No. Yeah, no. Gorilla Man, except for when we reviewed this a few minutes ago. <laughs> gorilla Man is a character who is a gorilla who has been cursed. Like he, Whoever kills the Gorilla Man gets to be the Gorilla Man. Otherwise, the Gorilla Man doesn't die. Yeah, so that's what we found out from this. And at the beginning of this, he's sort of hanging out with Ursa Minor or Ursa Major. I forget what his name is. Um, but if you don't know, he's the Russian character who uh, is a bear. And he, that guy's got a drinking problem. Gorilla Man's got a drinking problem. His, his narration from his panels, like his, his inner voice that's in the panels, is always talking about having a beer with somebody. Um, but it's... It's honestly, I didn't know this character, and by the end of the book, I had fallen in love with this character, which is a good testament to it. And on top of that, there is a lot going on with this particular storyline, and it may tie into something that previously happened with the Avengers. So go pick it up. Next is Action Comics number 1011, and this centers around Leviathan Rising. Leviathan is the villain that we don't know much about, just that some people are really, really super frightened about it from him. Uh, and on top of that, so what happens in this book is every intelligence community in the world in DC, mainline DC, gets dimed out. All of them get dimed out. They give out their information, their informants, uh, who is employed, like all their connections, like everything gets dimed out. More importantly, the one, one in particular, I think it's called Spiral, uh, is the one that spies on all the metas in DC Universe. 
they get dimed out completely and all the information gets given to Lois Lane who immediately goes to write a story. And on top of that, the previous issue, they took Amanda Waller, took her to the uh, Fortress of Solitude, left her there, oh, went off to go do their own thing. Why? Because that's smart. That's <laughs> the dumbest thing you could ever do. On top of that, no, 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 it's not the dumbest thing because Jimmy Olsen in this comic, or in the last comic, yeah, which is referenced in this comic, accuses Amanda Waller of something and takes her picture. That is the dumbest thing you could do. Yes. And so that, that is covered in here, and it's pretty funny. Uh, I had a really good time with this book. Uh, more importantly, it's previewing Leviathan, and the ads for Leviathan are super creepy. So it was hinted, Damien was saying that he might be Red Hood. Damien accuses everyone of being Red Hood these days, doesn't he? Does not he? like Red Hood at all. I don't know. Well, I mean, they get along sometimes. But, yeah, uh, so whoever Leviathan is, it's very clear in uh, the Barbara Gordon, the, the Batgirl uh, pan advertisement, that he knows her personally. So it's got to be someone on the inner circle. And I don't think it's Red Hood. I think the Red Hood thing is a red herring, which is fun to say. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have to wait and see. I'm super excited for Leviathan Rising. We'll, we'll have to wait and figure out what's going on with that. My throat's going. I need a drink. Next is Wonder Comics Dial V for, oh, sorry, Dial H for Hero. But this week it's V for Villain. Um, so what do we know about the Wonder Dial? Whoever dials it becomes a superhero, and at the same time, everyone around the world gets a number four on their forehead, and they can sense that the hero dial's been dialed, and they all know where he's at. So, people have been fighting for control of the hero dial, and our main character teamed up with this, uh, I can't remember her name, but uh, another gal, and they sort of decided that they were going to go find, Metro they were going to go to Metropolis and take the hero dial to Superman. While they're doing that, um, little was explained about the person who's calling them, that sort of fleshed out in this one. On top of that, uh, the other issues always had the main character transforming into a superhero. First was, you, you put it as Monster Truck Rally. Yeah, Monster Truck Rally. The second one was uh, anime, very DBZ anime. Yeah, uh, yeah this one in particular, uh, a cop has taken it. She decides to dial the hero dial, and then she becomes, well, it seems like a hero that spawned from Grateful Dead. I don't know how to describe it. It's a really psychedelic, psychedelic mind-controlling character. And then the, uh, the, the gal who's running around with the main character, I can't remember any of their names, I'm sorry, I, I got brain damage. Uh, she dials it in this one, and she becomes, what would you fight the 60s era rock with? Punk. Punk. Yeah. Yeah. Punk. Yeah. 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 So, you got to go pick this up. It's a pretty good read, man. I'm having a good time with, with uh, well, H for Hero, but in this issue, V for Villain. Go pick it up. Next is The Goon, and we really need to talk about Eric Powell for a minute. Eric Powell, if you don't know, wrote The Goon for I don't know how many years, and then he wrote Hillbilly, and I love the Hillbilly books. I had a good, I fell in love with them because the art is so amazing. Um, and Eric Powell, I mean, he does art and he writes, and this one also has Rachel Cohen, and it's, it really is creators at the top of their game. They're just the absolute best. And on top of that, the goon is a little formulaic, and usually it's like a villain is introduced, the villain is campy and a little bit fun, and then, you know, the goon goes and deals with it, and the way he deals with it is he tends to beat the crud out of it, and that, that's usually how these books go. Yet I have such a good time with them, so go pick them up. Uh, and another thing that we need to talk about, like, they do backstories in The Goon, and they do it in pencil. They don't use a lot of ink. And normally, I don't like that. Like, Yogi knows that I've complained about books that do that, but it works for The Goon. Like, they don't do it for the, for the whole issue, just the backstory. It, it really works. And I don't know. This art is just so good. Like, it's, it's hard not to fall in love with this stuff. So go pick it up. Next is Underdog and Pals. And, um, well... We talked about this last time, but I'm a little haunted by Bullwinkle stuff. Slightly. Just slightly. <laughs> I used to work at a place called Bullwinkles, and Bullwinkles was Chuck E. Cheese with Bullwinkle characters. It basically, it, it was animatronic Bullwinkle characters. They'd have a show. There was like a water fountain that had a show that was like a dancing water fountain, and then they played Bullwinkle cartoons constantly. And I had to dress up as Dudley Do-Right. That job sucked. Uh, <laughs> 
So it haunted me a little bit. But one of the things I kind of fell in love with was I fell in love with the Bull Winkle cartoons. I don't know why I hear them in my sleep, but I still like them. That's the only thing from that job I liked. I, I wish I could burn that part of my life to the ground. Um, anyways, so Underdog, it plays out like sort of like a Bull Winkle cartoon. There's like a main story, there's a couple side stories, and that's what you get. There's no deep plot, but it was fun. If you're looking to recapture your youth, or you're a kid and you want something that's pretty fun and, and sort of campy at times, this is a good pick. Next is Batgirl, and I have not reviewed her in a while. No. no. But in this issue, I guess she's fighting furries. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, there are furry characters and, and bird characters, and what do you call a shark furry? A sharky? I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. A, a shirt? No, <laughs> no. Uh, I, I don't know. A shark furry? Um, so she's sort of fighting furries, and it's kind of two issues, one issues into the arc, so this is the second issue, and yet I wasn't confused. Basically, <clears throat> it opens with her captured, and she's got to escape, and that's where it picks up. Wasn't confused at all. The way she escapes this was a little weird to a paratrooper, but you'll have to wait and see. And then, um, yeah, it wasn't a bad showing. Um, meanwhile, there's sort of a subplot of something going on while she's fighting the bad guys, and I think that that's the important thing. So her character might deal with some pretty shattering consequences that are going on in the background. But Batgirl is a really, really good book. I don't know why I hadn't reviewed it in a while, but it's pretty good showing. The art is always kind of on point. I, I never have a bad time with a Batgirl comic. So, okay. Next is Flashier One. So the last issue had Flash sort of stumbling a lot, and on top of that, he... he yeah, he'd be tripping, and he was going through a lot of shoes and trying to find some good polymer that worked, and what else was going on? Oh, the end of the issue, he ran into time. He ran into the future and ran into his future self, and that's touched on in here. And, I mean, there's not a huge, a lot of character build stuff, but it does tell the origin of the cosmic treadmill, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool, kind of important. Um, on top of that, uh, I had a pretty good time with it. But you need to kind of take it with a grain of salt because I really like the uh, the year one stuff. I like it a lot. I think the the Green Arrow year one I've talked about. Uh, that's really my measure, my yardstick for measuring all the other year ones because that one was perfect. That one was amazing. And on top of that, I think we're getting Superman year one this year, and it's Black Label, yeah. which is weird for because Superman's kind of a Boy Scout, so why would he Very be on the Black Label? But, oh, okay, we'll wait and see. Um, so, anyways, this one is really good. Uh, it might be a little confusing to jump in on, but you're going to want to get on this year one stuff, so go pick it up. Um, next is Freedom Fighters. And I have fallen in love with these characters. I didn't know they existed really before this comic, and then I started reading it. I think the first issue, I loved it. I, I was talking about the Uncle Sam character. A few issues with him, without him, like, being in the action and then they brought him back from the dead and it was the most wrestlemania resurrection Hulkamania. yeah Hulk, yeah yeah do you hear that what's that old glory <laughs> louder oh it's so good um <coughs> i need a drink <laughs> yeah so this was really really good i had a good time with it but i'm in love with the freedom fighter characters i think i'm getting a lot from this as a cap fan that i'm a little disappointed with current cap on the shelf so i'm getting that from uncle sam and freedom fighters but uh if you can't tell there is a superman in play and the superman of their world is um, I, I don't want to call him a nazi because they call him a ratsy but yeah. he's very clearly got a swastika yeah. on his chest and he's superman i i well i can't spoil it for you but it opens with superman it says doom planet desperate scientists last hope and it shows like the pod rocketing off and then it says genocidal tyrant so Hitler found him, I guess, and it goes from there. You need to go read this. It's a pretty good read. It's really, really fun. If if you're missing, if you're feeling like the current cap on the shelf is not hitting you where you need it to hit, to hit you, uh, Freedom Fighters is a really, really good showing. Um, next is Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and the last issue was the first appearance, I think, first appearance yes. of a character called Starling, and she looks very. What does she look like? She looks like the vulture, and there may be a reason for that. 
may or may not be a reason for that. You need to go read this book. Uh, more importantly, what I like about this character is the Starling character is a very youthful character for this world. She, when she meets another hero, it doesn't or a villain, it doesn't play out like you would normally expect it. Uh, she has a different kind of banter, a very almost feels realistic banter. Now, granted. These Miles Morales books are pretty fun, and they're good escapism. However, there's not a really deep, overarching pl plot, which is what I want for this character. I, I think they're starting small, but they need to build up to a plot or a villain that haunts him for, like, several books. I would like to see that. But otherwise, really good showing from Miles Morales Spider-Man this week. Okay, next book is Tony Stark, Iron Man. And so Tony Stark has not gotten a lot of love lately. He hasn't been flying off our shelves. And it's kind of weird because the art in these books are amazing. And the writing is not too bad. He's, he's, got, he's dealing with his brother. His brother is sort of defected to another company. Uh, that company has been making moves against Stark Industries. And meanwhile, if you can't tell from this cover, there's a title here because there's a new suit in play. Why? Well, actually, I don't... We've had the God Buster before, yeah, right? Yeah. We've had God Buster, we've had Hulk Buster. Generally, the suits that are big tend to have Buster in them. Wasn't Killer? I no, think it was no, Buster. No, no, I think it was huge. This one is called The God Killer. It clearly says God Killer and shows a new suit on the cover, so you need to go buy this book. It's pretty good. Granted, it's the wrap-up of an arc that's been going on for a while, but I wasn't confused as somebody who missed a couple of issues. Uh, it was a pretty good showing. Uh, a lot of the characters in play are fun. More importantly, um... Well, Tony's been dealing with his drinking problem again, and I like seeing that because it humanizes his character a lot for me. And they don't, like, they didn't touch on that enough, I don't think, in the MCU. No, no not, at not at all. And I, I, like, he's got a real long history of a drinking problem, and I like when they, when they show that. So anyways, God, God Killer, that's the only reason you go out and pick this book. Well, there's a lot of reasons to pick up this book, but that's the best. So, yes, good showing. Good showing. Um, next is Road of Bones. Road of Bones takes place in uh, Eastern Europe in Russia during the time of Stalin. One of the main characters has been jailed for 25 years. It, well, a camp, prison camp, for 25 years because he made a joke about Stalin. Appropriate reaction. For Stalin? Yeah. <laughs> um, so he's dealing with starvation. Meanwhile, he's been smuggling some of his food to a, a sort of mythical creature that his grandmother told him about. And it... It's the creature is in play, but doesn't do a lot in this book. Just sort of kind of warns him, and that's all I'm gonna say. Oh, and and they escape from the prison camp, which is not a good thing to do in Siberia. It's not a wise thing to do in Siberia. So, uh, yeah, Road of Bones, pretty good showing from IDW. And granted, I've sort of fallen off from a lot of IDW books, so I I was kind of surprised. Had a pretty good time. I want to see more. More importantly, I think. We talked about the art in the uh, practice video, and the art is really cool. Like, the way they do um, light, play with light, and do shadow, and the shadow sort of blends into the character really well. It's haunting. It's, it's very, it's exactly what I would expect out of a book that's very horror. So, yeah, good showing. Next is X-Force. Now, I know you've heard this before. <laughs> Cable goes back in time <laughs> to... Fix the timeline. Because that's always what Cable does. Cable never goes back in time and is like, yo, let's have a beer. I love this timeline. Let's just hang out for a bit. No, he's, yeah, Cable Ex Machina. Um, so that's happening. And X-Force is going on. And there is a lot of moving parts in play. Uh, and there's a lot of characters in play that I don't think need to be in play. Uh, it's, I don't know. I'm comparing this against Rosenberg's Uncanny, which to me is is pretty good. I'm having a good time with it. Granted, I think it's going away with Powers of X and uh, and uh, what's the other book? Powers of X. You hear the X Men uh, theme. X, House of X. House of X. Uh, I think they're consolidating again for those. But uh, well, I don't know. I was a little confused. Granted, I missed a couple issues. I don't think you should jump in on this book um, unless you're an X Force fan. Uh, I think you should wait maybe another issue to catch up. Uh, it was a little confusing. I don't know. And the X-Force characters don't seem to me like the Uncanny characters. But granted, I've known a lot of them for years upon years. And some of these I'm still new to. So, And granted, I'm not a giant mutant fan. That's never really been my jam. Next is New Agents of Atlas, War of the Realms book. The first New Agents of Atlas. What did you think, Yogi? 
He loved it. I liked it too. I, I don't know if I loved it because it felt like they had a lot of characters to introduce in that book and it felt really kind of rushed. But it was a pretty good showing. I like all the new characters and I like the new character designs. This book, however, I'm very happy to say is a really good showing. And we have the goddess Pele in, in this story too, don't we? That's why I loved it. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's why Yogi loved it. But uh, this one was a really good showing. It didn't feel as rushed. Uh, the characters were good. The characters were fun. They had a subplot of rescuing someone in the middle of it. Uh, I had a good time with this book. It was great. So I kind of think that New Agents of Atlas is something you should go pick up. Like run and go pick it up. The first one... Yeah, go get the first one too. But if you want to jump in on the second, you didn't pick up the first. This is a great comic this week. Next is maybe my pick of the week. We're kind of debating on it. Uh, Strike Force, Land of the Giants. So this was Team, Team. Uh, what was it? Cool Fantasy Weapons, yeah. I think we called it. So Team Cool Fantasy Weapons, which is also Team Spider-Man with a funny hat. His funny hat is explained in this, and it's very comical how it comes to be. We made fun of the hat and said it was like a joke hat. Yeah. And Wolverine clearly thinks the same way we do, because the way it comes into play is hysterical. And I laughed audibly, I think, three or four times during this, this book, which is generally a good sign for a book. The, the story also, it got kind of deep. It was a little sad in the end, which I liked. It gave me, you know, a lot of emotion. Um, and the art was great. The art was on point. The story did, wasn't boring at all. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, go check out this book. I think I'm going to call it like this is our pick of the week. Okay, I'm with it, man. So, yeah, yeah, run out and get this. This is the strongest of the Strike Force books and my second favorite to the mainline War of the Realms. I think mainline War of the Realms is still my favorite thing right now. Strike Force, Land of the Giants, second favorite out of this event. Next is The Punisher. I'm is on there though, right? No, it's right. Duggan. No, it's it's Ros I don't know if they're related to this is the Rosenberg the cover artist. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this is the Punisher, not to be confused with the mainline Punisher. This is the War of the Realms one, and it's okay. If you're a Punisher fan, you'll like it, but there's not a lot of growth. Like you know he's in the last issue it was established that he's got to move a bunch of patients from a hospital uh, through the Jersey tunnel to Jersey. To safety, and meanwhile, they got to fight a bunch of mythical creatures. So he goes onto a prison bus. He shoots one of the prisoners as an example and says, like, I will let you all come with me to rescue these people, but if you act out, I'm going to kill you. So what do you think the ticking clock is in the story, Yogi? Uh, getting killed? Probably that, and the prisoners are probably eventually going to act out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. Uh, so it's very formulaic. I had an okay time with it as a Punisher fan. It was a pretty good showing. But uh, I don't think it's anything spectacular compared to a lot of the other War of the Realm stuff that's going on right now. It was okay at best. The art, too, is sort of mm, kind of on the fence. Next is Justice League Dark. And I've had the best time with this book. This book has gone back and forth. When, when they both started, it was Justice League Dark was super popular. Justice League Odyssey, not as popular in our store. And then they flipped, and Justice League Odyssey was the book selling, selling most on the cover. Justice League Dark wasn't. And it's flipped back. Now Justice League Dark is everyone's favorite jam. Uh, <coughs> well, not everyone's favorite jam, but most people's favorite jam, it feels like. And this is really good. They've been fleshing out the magic system of DC so much in this book. And there, as somebody who already liked DC's magic system, it's nice to see more stuff added to it. On top of that, like, Wonder Woman's backstory got explained in the whole, uh, what was it called? The witch, witching, witching hour? hour. Yeah. The witching hour, that touched on that. Uh, and in this issue, they're touching on order magic versus chaos magic. And maybe some of these characters tap chaos magic. I don't know. You're going to have to go read it and find out. Chaos magic is pretty cool, though. I'm going to say that. Uh, next is Wolverine Infinity Watch. And the Wolverine Infinity Watch book is the best buddy cop comedy we have on our shelves. That's what it feels like. And more importantly, it's not just a buddy cop comedy between Loki and Wolverine. No, it's Loki, Wolverine, and Bats the Ghost Dog. Because why not? Uh, but And on top of that, this, was, this came out of the Infinity Wars event, which wasn't my favorite event. I didn't have a good time with that event. <coughs> However, this book coming out of it, what happened was the stones all became sentient, right. and they went off and bound themselves to human beings, or to people in the universe. We don't know if they're all human. 
Uh, but the time stone bound, it, bound itself to a human. And he's firmly established that he has powers. He's kind of tapping into the powers and figuring them out. He's even got his own kind of weapon in this book, which was a good showing. I, I've, I've had a good time with this book. It makes me laugh. It does feel like a buddy cop comedy. So go pick this up. It's pretty good. Uh, one thing I will say, though, the fourth book is a little bit confusing. I think you should start with the book before the fourth book or, or go get the other ones before that. But still, the fourth book is not bad if you've been reading the series. Next is War of the Realms Journey into Mystery. And finally, we get the cowboy ghosts that we knew were going to be involved. The other two books were fun. You agreed they were fun, I right? Totally agree. Yogi liked the books. I liked the books. However, to me, they sort of felt like filler. Like, we all knew that the cowboy characters from Marvel's old Western line were going to be introduced. We just didn't know how, and we didn't know when. Well, they're introduced. These characters wind up in a ghost town, and they get attacked by ghosts of the Western era, which is legitimately what they call them, cowboy ghosts of the Western era. And they're fun. Like, I had a good time. I didn't know anything about these characters, but I want to know more. Like, the Phantom Rider is pretty cool. Um, I would like to see a lot more of these characters, which is sad. I think, I think we're only going to see them for, like, another issue, right? Oh, yeah. Probably. Yeah. But good to see. Uh, I, I don't know. It made me want to go look up the old sort of Marvel Western books and, and read a little bit more and learn a, bit, a little bit more about that lore. Pretty cool, though. Uh, next is Star Wars Age of Rebellion, Jabba the Hutt. Uh, I do like Jabba the Hutt. Like, I like the crime syndicate stuff of uh, the Star Wars universe. However, I didn't know that I would like him that much. And this book was really fun. I, I'd say it's a close second to the Boba Fett book, which was my favorite of the Age of the Rebellion. So that should tell you something. In this book, he's, he's got people that want to buy Tusken Raider wine, which what? seems like something that would be really hard to get, right? <laughs> Sounds like something really hard to get. So that comes into play, and Jabba sort of, he definitely pulls the strings like, like a crime boss would. He sort of sets things up and knocks things down, and I loved it. I had a great time with it. So the Age of Rebellion book, Star Wars, uh, Jabba the Hutt, go pick this one up. And that's all of our books for this week, so let's do the drawing real fast. All right. Woo! I think the second take was better, man. I think so, too. I think so. Granted, I have my daughter around here. If you're hearing crying in the background, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we right. have children. I'm sure you guys know children exist in this world. Sometimes okay, we deal with it. Up your daddy. All right. We're going to help <laughs> us out today. All right. So you want to say hi? Say hi you want to say hi? Can, can she be seen from there? Yeah. Man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. All you right. say hi? Say hello. Hello. No? Okay. okay. We're shy. All right, 45. 45. Going to be, drum roll, Melissa Sukwande. Melissa, you want a poster. Yeah. 173. Airborne. Right? Derek Ganius. I didn't realize that's your <laughs> unit. That's my unit. Oh, we can't do Derek Ganius. His account's been suspended. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, Derek. <laughs> Sorry, Derek. You don't win a poster. Next time, pick up your books. <laughs> 148. 148. Ouch. <laughs> Michael Gomez. Michael Gomez. Yay. Yay. So once again, if you come in and pick your stuff up, we'll put your name right back in the drawing. Yeah. Except Derek's. <laughs> 267. 267. <laughs> ah, that is going to be Kevin Huang. Kevin Huang, you won a poster. Yay. So these three people win posters. Yeah. And that's all for this week. We'll see you next week. Oh, I'm going to Bacon this weekend. So... If you want to come to a science fiction fantasy convention in San Mateo, it's, in my opinion, the best kept science fiction fantasy convention secret of the Bay. Yep. It feels like it. It's, it's a very fun, quieter crowd, but a fun convention crowd. But so at the same time, you get to see Steve on panel. Yeah, you get to see me. Uh, and I guess technically it'd be Dream Machine's very first uh, con. Yeah, we're going to sell books there too. So come through if you get a chance. Uh, uh, yeah, chance. that's it. <laughs>